Johnny Dollar. Les Walters, Johnny, at Worldwide Mutual. Well, hi, Les. Say, I heard your report on that man who disappeared up in Eugene, Oregon a couple of weeks ago. Jonathan Doe? Yeah. The man who never really existed? That's right. That was a pretty rough one, Les. I can believe that. So it ought to be a lot easier for you to find a man who does exist. Or who did. Well, which is it? I wish I knew. His name is Elmer Loomis. Uh, L-E-U-M-A-S. Loomis. So what happened? I told you he disappeared. I mean, what have you got to go on? Leads, clues, whatever you want to call them. Well, that's the funny part of it. Yeah? Nothing, Johnny. Absolutely nothing to go <laughs> you on. You call that funny? So maybe you better come on over here. We can talk about it. Well, now, let's... Yeah? So maybe you're right. And now, Act One of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Worldwide Mutual Insurance Company Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Loomis matter, spelled L-E-U-M-A-S. No leads at all, huh? Well, at least it gives me a clean, uncluttered start. So, expense account item one, a dollar ten for a taxi to the office of Worldwide Mutual in the Sperling Building down on the square. Hi, Johnny. I, uh, I suppose I could have saved time by telling you over the phone just to pack your bags and head on down to Vineland, but sit down. Uh, thanks. On in New Jersey? That's right. About halfway between Philadelphia and Atlantic City. Yeah, Les, I know the place. I handle a couple of... Hey, wait a minute. You said Loomis? That's right, Elmer Loomis, the man who disappeared. Isn't there a Loomis uh, glass company in Vineland? One of the biggest. Up till a few years ago when he retired, Elmer Loomis was the sole owner of it. Hmm. And he must be plenty wealthy, huh? Millions. Which offers a lot of possible reasons for his disappearance. That's right. Okay, then, let's just tell me all. I thought I made myself clear, Johnny, when I said I should have sent you right on down there to Vineland because all I know about him is that he's wealthy, retired... Sportsman, yachtsman, that sort of thing, and he suddenly vanished. How old a man is he? Well, according to his copy of the policy, he's uh, 59. Straight life? Straight life. And who stands to benefit if his body just happens to turn up somewhere dead? His wife, Lena. How old is she? Let's see, she was uh, 30 last June. Aww. That's right. And incidentally, I understand she's quite a beauty. At least according to Harry Ware, who sold the policy. Incidentally, huh? What do you mean by that? Oh, use your head less. Young, attractive woman, wealthy husband, nearly twice her age. Here we go again. Now, don't go jumping to conclusions, Johnny. Oh, no, of course not. Of course not. But uh, just how soon do you suppose I can make connections to Vineland, New Jersey? Two, four dollars even for a couple of taxi fares. One back to my apartment where I packed a bag, the other out to Bradley Field. Item three, twelve fifty five for a plane to Philadelphia. Item four, there in the city of brotherly love, fifty bucks deposit on a rental car. After a late and hasty lunch, that's item five, two and a quarter, I drove across the Delaware River Bridge and picked up Route 47. South Jersey is flat as a pancake, but full of beautiful homes and rich farmland. Occasional cranberry bogs and lots of big poultry farms and peach orchards. So the drive was a pleasant one. Then in Vineland, the so-called heart of sunny southern Jersey, I went straight to police headquarters. A block off Landis Avenue, the main drag. I contacted Sergeant Louis Tommaso, with whom I'd worked before. As usual, he was right on the ball. Kind of had a hunch you might be dragged in on this. How are you, Johnny? Well, pretty good, Louis. Or rather, I'm not so sure. Do you have any real leads on this case? Johnny? Yeah? Let me hand you a thought for the day. Okay, sure. Don't be surprised when you find that Lena Loomis isn't at all broken up over this loss of her husband because she isn't. If you ask me, she's downright tickled to death about it. Is that your snide way of telling me that she's interested in somebody else? Somebody closer to her own age? Johnny, if I could find out who that somebody else is. But who knows? Maybe there isn't any. Or maybe there's a dozen of them. I don't know. This gal is the social type. One big party after another, night after night, month after month, ever since they got married. And Loomis? Couldn't stay far enough away from it all. Spend most of his time off on hunting or fishing trips or out on his yacht. Funny that he ever married her in the first place. Well, 
when a gorgeous young charmer starts cooing at a poor, lonely widower, nearly 60, well, what do you expect? Apparently all she cared about was getting her hooks on his money. What else? When did he go? Ten days ago. Got up, had breakfast, and announced he was going to spend the day in Philadelphia. Walked out the front door, and that was the last anybody ever saw. And what about enemies, Lou? Not the one that anybody knows. I mean, about. anything, any reason to think he might have been hauled off and murdered? The only reason to think he wasn't is the fact he took some luggage, some clothing with him. Well, that doesn't prove anything. You've questioned his wife, of course. Yeah, yeah. When you get through talking to her, you'll know just as much or as little as I do. Well, how about his favorite hunting and fishing spots? Check them all, favorite and otherwise. Nothing. You say that he owns a yacht. Owned. Huh? A sailboat, a big one. Kept it down in the little town of Tuckahoe on the Tuckahoe River. So? He just happened to have sold that yacht two days before he disappeared. Oh. Johnny... We haven't a single solitary thing to go on. You sure about that, Lou? What do you mean? Not even his wife? Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Loomis Matter. Expense account item 6580, dinner for Sergeant Louis Tommaso and myself at the East Landis Hotel there in Vina, New Jersey. Then he gave me some directions, and I left him and drove east on Landis Avenue. In case you're interested, I found out that a guy by the name of Landis founded this fair city. The Loomis home was a massive red brick affair set in the middle of, well, it must have been nearly an acre of huge lawns and trees and flower beds. 25 or 30 rooms, I guess, really a mansion. And the long, broad driveway was lined with maple trees. In other words, there was money here. Plenty. As for Lena Loomis, wowee. If she was there, believe me, she didn't look it. And brother, she had everything. She was tall, lithe, and brunette. With just enough makeup to enhance her soft and gently tanned complexion. She wore a pair of sleek blue velvet capris and a light silk blouse. A subtle touch of arpege that... While at the risk of sounding repetitious. Wow. Well, come in, Johnny. Yeah. How an old codger, wealthy or not, could ever rate something like this. And framed there in the doorway and a trace of moonlight filtering through the trees. Believe me. Johnny? Hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mrs. Loomis. Mrs. Loomis? And with that look in your eye... It's Lena, and you know it, and come in. Uh, yeah, sure, thanks. Oh, darn it, you would come the one night when I'm not having a party. In here, Johnny. Yeah. The place is dead as a doornail. Then I suppose I have to give the servant some time off. Sit down, huh? Like a drink? Yeah, I think I could use it. Uh, no, 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 thanks. Not even to keep me company? Scotch and soda? Uh, a light one. I just knew that was you I saw down on land. What? What would you say? I say I just knew you'd be coming down here to investigate Elmer's disappearance. So when you rang the doorbell just now, I wasn't the least bit surprised. Oh, that's so? Elmer was always a great fan of yours. Your radio program, I mean. Where you tell about all those cases you saw. That's why I knew you the second I saw you. I see. Well, now, Lena. Johnny, I'm so fed up with answering questions about him. That Louis Tommaso from the police department has just about driven me crazy with him. <laughs> he is kind of a cute guy, though, isn't he? Do you know him? Well, as a matter of fact, I talked with him just oh, before. Oh, here's your drink. Oh, thanks. Bottoms up? Huh? These glasses must hold about a quart. Oh, you know what I mean. Skull. Yeah, skull. Now, Johnny, I don't know how much Louis told you about Elmer vanishing this way, but whatever it was, there's nothing more I can tell you. He's gone. That's all. And you know something? I don't mind a bit. Yeah, well, I kind of had a notion You find that... his body lying around somewhere? Well, just look at all it gets me. This home and property and all the stock in the glass company he sold and money. More money, Johnny, than you could even imagine. Yeah. And I believe that his insurance amounts oh, to quite a lot. Oh, the insurance. Oh, that's nothing compared to all the money he has lying around in banks all over the place. It'll all be mine. And if you don't think I know how to use it... Um... You know, there are a couple of things that might put a crimp in your plans, Lena. Uh-uh. What Lena wants, Lena gets. 
Why do you think I ever married Elmer in the first place? Ooh, Elmer, isn't that a terrible name? Suppose I find out that he's been murdered. Now, who would ever want to murder poor, sweet old Elmer, and why? Oh, maybe to get hold of all this money you've been talking yes, about. Of course not. I told you, I get everything. That's exactly if what I was... just doesn't show up after seven years, well, you know, the statute of limitations. Oh, yeah, I know. And what if he does come back? You know, suffering from amnesia, or maybe he was in an accident somewhere, you know. Wow. So I'll do what I can to keep him happy as long as he lives, and then I'll have it all. I don't love him, Johnny, not a bit. But I do try to keep him happy. It's the least I can do. Lena. And then when he dies, well, like I said. Lena, listen to me. He's a handsome old dog. I'll say that for him. You see? There in that picture on the table beside you. Yeah, I see. But now listen. Tall and wiry with that big shock of hair. Yes, I see it. But why he kept that mustache and Van Dyke? Well, they made him look even older than he was. I mean, than he is. What did you mean, was? What? Now, Lena, listen. There are some things I want to know. How about another drink? For instance, your husband had a yacht. Oh, didn't you know? He sold it just before he was... I mean, just before he disappeared. To whom? (laughs) Does it matter? Yes. Well, it was some man by the name of... Well, here. Here's the bill of sale. His name is Samuel Remley. Remley. Right here. R-E-M-L-E, Samuel Remley. At Tuckahoe, New Jersey. Well, now you've asked a question. You've got an answer. So let's have another drink, huh? So help me, I simply couldn't pin it down to answering my questions. After a solid hour of trying, all I ended up with was an invitation to stick around for a big party she was throwing the following night. Young, charming, attractive, yes. But trying to make sense with her was a lost cause. Finally, standing out at the front door, ready to leave, I decided to switch my tactics. You... you can't mean that. That is exactly what I mean, because from what you've told me, what little you've told me, there's only one conclusion I can draw. John! And you somehow contrived to have your husband done away with, to get your hands on all that money you've been yapping about. Don't you see I get it all anyway, sooner or later? Why wait, huh? Even if I have to wait out to seven years for that statute of limitations. Now listen, Johnny, I don't like this. I don't like the way you're accusing me. You, you're threatening me. That's right. I gave you all the chance I could to cooperate, but you wouldn't take... Now, you just get out. You get out of here. Sure, for the time being. No. You stay away from me. Don't you ever come back you here. You better play it my way, Lena. No! Get out! Oh, well. Hey, just, just a minute, buddy. Oh, who are you? Me? I just happen to be looking out for Mrs. Loomis. Yeah? Yeah, and I don't like what I was hearing just now. Oh, that's too bad. Now, if you get out of my way. Oh, no, you don't, Buster. Oh, no. Jerry? Jerry. That's right, me. <laughs> Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. My card case was gone. There was a lump on my head that must have been made by a blackjack. And inside my head was the solid conviction that Lena Loomis was, without question, responsible for the disappearance, possibly the murder of her husband. I climbed painfully back into my car, drove to the hotel, and after a dirty look from the night clerk, got a rum and hit the sack. Early the next morning, I was down at police headquarters. Well, not having had a good look at him, you don't give us much to go on. Yeah, well, look, if you pick them up, Lou, let me take care of them. Now, Johnny... Let's just say I want to question him. Did you get anywhere with Mrs. Lewis? Oh, Lou, the only question I got straight at answers for was... Hey, wait a minute. Yeah? The yacht. Did you check out that yacht? I told you, Lewis sold it just before he disappeared. I saw the bill of sale on it myself. Yeah, so did I. But, Louie, I got a hunch. How far is Tuckahoe? Well, 30, 35 miles. He kept the boat at Wilson's Landing. Good. Now, now listen, John. Lou, I'm going to play this hunch for all it's worth. It was more than a hunch. Because it had to do with a rather strange and interesting combination of names. And the more I thought about it, well, I made tracks to the little town of Tuckahoe, to Wilson's Landing on the Tuckahoe River. 
There you are, Mr. Dollar. Right here is where the Lena was tied up. But the owner, this Mr. Remley, he took it out last night? Yes, sir. Did you know the previous owner? No, uh, I'm kind of new here. But the boss must have. Captain Wilson. Where is he? Been down to Atlantic City the past week. All right. What does this Samuel Remley look like? Well, uh, Mr. Remley's an old man, about uh, 60. Yeah? Tall, slim, kind of wiry. Old head of hair, a mustache, and a little Van Dyke beard? Oh, no, 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 sir. Uh, Mr. Remley's clean shaved and wears a butch. Oh. Well, now, listen. Yes, sir? Do you know where he headed for when he took off last night? Mm, no, I don't, sir. Then show me the nearest telephone. Item seven, three bucks for telephone calls. I hit pay dirt on the fourth one to the Coast Guard station at Cape May. Why, yes, Mr. Dollar. The uh, Lena pulled in here a couple hours ago. Good. Uh, she's tied up at the clubhouse dock. Well, I can see her from here. Then, Captain, I'll be right down there. police must have all been looking the other way, for I'm sure I deserved a handful of tickets for speeding on the trip down to Cape May. And there I found the Lena, tied up and taking on supplies. The owner? Well, when I told him who I was, he spread his hands quietly, smiled, led me down into the cabin and poured a couple of drinks. Salute, Mr. Donner. Salute, Mr., uh... Well, is it Loomis or Remley? Either. The names tip you off? <laughs> uh, it took a while to get through this thick skull of mine, but... Well, the rather unusual spelling of your right name, L-E-U-M-A-S. Yes. And spelled backward, it comes out Samuel. Elmer spelled backward comes out Remley. Elmer Loomis, Samuel Remley. Hmm. So obvious, I hoped it might be overlooked, but... Oh, incidentally, I'm sorry about Pete and Jerry. Pete and Jerry? The bodyguards I left for Lena. Unknown to her, of course. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to meet those boys again. But I wanted to be sure she'd be watched over while I was away, taking time to really figure out what to do about her, about our rather pitiful relationship. That's the reason for the disappearing act? Yes. I knew that if I suggested just going away alone, she wouldn't hear of it. So... And you were staying right here in Tuckahoe. Old Cap Wilson at the landing knew who I was, of course. But nobody else did after I cut my hair and beard. Nobody else had really known me there anyway. But then last night you took off. When the boys came down and told me... Oh, here, by the way, you'd better have your credentials back. Oh, thanks. Where were you going? Uh, I don't know. Most anywhere. <laughs> I might have realized I wouldn't get away from you, though. I'm a great admirer of yours, Dollar. Well, thanks. So, what now? You've, uh, had time to make up your mind? About your wife, I mean? No. Yes, I suppose so. Well, I don't know of any formal charges I ought to make against you. Of course, the violent police. I'll somehow try to make up to them for all the trouble I've caused them. Would you like to sail back to Tuckahoe? No, thanks. I've got my car. And who knows? Maybe you'd like a little more time to think. Alone. So, it wasn't much of a case after all. The two thugs, Sergeant Louis locked them up for assault, and I guess that'll have to do for them. As for Loomis and his wife, well, I'm glad it isn't my problem. Expense account total, including the trip back to Hartford, eighty-nine fifty. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Uh-huh.